don't believe me? Well, just two years ago, Nihal Parthasarathi and Katie Kapler founded a company that was inspired by a problem posed to Nihal in a focus group. The solution to that problem is now a company that's valued at $12 million. Nihal and Katie join me now from New York University's uh, this incubator where their company was founded. Hello to both of you. Hi. How's it going, Allie? Good. Nihal, I, uh, I live in Manhattan on the west side, and I would like, like to learn how to play the accordion. What can you do for me? Well, uh, we work with uh, hundreds of local providers of local education, and um, certainly there are a few of them that teach accordion lessons. So you come to our site, you search for the type of class that you're looking to learn, and we'll show you a list of all the classes you can take, and you can sign up right there online. And I just did that. I went to Course Horse, and I put in accordion, and it showed 17 classes, some of which have not exactly to do with accordions, but uh, there were at least three or four where I could actually learn, Katie, how to... Uh, uh, how to play an accordion. The, the problem that somebody asked Nihal about, I guess, is uh, is there a place I can go to find all the SAT classes available in my area? And you guys figured out there wasn't. So what'd you do about it, Katie? Well, we immediately spoke to schools um, to understand if they were having trouble filling seats, and they were. And then we spoke to consumers, and we, we found out that they were searching, like yourself, for accordion classes and not being able to find them. And we immediately launched a site that catalogs all the local information. And now you can search by neighborhood, schedule, price, whatever your purchase criteria is, and immediately find what you're looking for. OK, so you guys were at the business school at NYU. I don't, are you still there? Is that where you, are you still at the business school, or are you just involved in this incubator? Uh, I'm sorry, Alec, could you repeat that? Are you, so are you still, are you still at, at NYU's business school? Uh, we're, we're still getting an echo. Oh, my goodness. Can you, okay, I think they might just be able to hear themselves. Uh, until we figure oh, out there what... There we go. There, you got me back? Okay, good. All right, so now you're, you were at the business school, and you, and I don't think you still are, you can tell me, but you entered a business competition sort of thing, one of these things where you go in with your idea, and you won. You won 75000 bucks. Were you already in this business, or had, was it just an idea at the time? Um, well, we had just quit our jobs um, when the competition kicked off, and you know it was a great opportunity for us here at NYU. About 250 teams enter every year, and we thought, you know, we're building this business, we're working full time on it, we might as well jump into this competition and see what we can do. And over the course of the competition, we re received a tremendous amount of feedback and guidance, and we were fortunate enough to walk away with the prize. And Katie, uh, investors, angel investors. Who, who invest in small things often monitor these comp uh, competitions, are often the judges in these competitions, and when somebody wins, or even if they don't win but they're close to winning, uh, investors scoop in and say, hey, I want a piece of the action. They did that to you as well, and you said no. Yes, we, we wanted time to figure it out, and we took six to eight months to really understand the market, get our first wave of customers in, understand what we could do better, get some great business metrics, and then we engaged the investors at that point when we had learned more and matured as a company. Nihal, you are not, you, you, neither of you are technical people. You're not, web, you're not coders, you're not website developers, uh, and yet this is ultimately a technology thing. You've taken all these classes that are out there that people can't find easily, and you've put it into one place. Uh, I, I, is there a lesson in here that you don't have to be a tech person to get in on these, uh, on technology companies? Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, the first question um, that we as founders get from new, new entrepreneurs is, you know, how can I find a tech co-founder? And the, the lesson from our experience has been, you know, you don't need one to start the company. And in fact, it'll be impossible to find one until you build something that's really worth working towards. So you as the business co-founder, uh, like we did, you know, you can find a development firm to build, uh, build out your idea, launch the beta, get customers. And really, that's what attracts that development talent to your business. Katie, I used the term incubator a few times. Uh, in promoting the segment. Tell me what an incubator is. Sure, it's a, um, a collection of companies that are all in the early stage of, of their life cycle and it's an incredibly nurturing supportive environment where you've got an incredible mentor network. So whatever topic or subject that you need help with, there's a knowledge pool that you can tap. Um, and the great thing is that because all the companies are at the same level in their life cycle, we can hop on over to our neighbors and ask about, hey, have you dealt with this problem? This is what we're seeing. And chances are they have, and they figured it out. Well, I love the fact that I'm talking to you guys right now because I suspect this is going to lead to big things. 
uh, and you guys are going to be responsible for it. Nihal Parthasarati and uh, Katie Kaplan are the co-founders of Core Source. By the way, if you live in Manhattan, get on the website and check it out. It's cool. I'm going to learn how to play an accordion because of you guys. Good to see both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, today on Twitter and Facebook, I've been asking